Welcome back to Mythical Minstrelsy Patreon Poetry. I am Teresa Garcia, or Amehana Arashi, depending on where you know me from. The month of March was a very busy month for me. Not only did I manage my minimum of the Patreon poems, but I also was very busy with the narration project and several other projects that I'm not going to mention here because I was just so busy. Dragonheart even saw several things done to it and several things that I wrote for it. And after this, I need to get cracking on writing the Mayday Beltane mini-challenge for the next chapter in the Fetu Saga. So this brings us to the first of three poems for the month of March, One More Day. When the darkness presses down on you, in the stillness of the dreaming night, when it wraps and enshrouds all you see, though you struggle with all your might, and all the gold you touch so soft turns to cold lead beneath your hand, where the quivering bird on the bough falls at your glance upon the land, when the warmth of the shining day becomes tinged gray in despair, remember then that someone loves you, placing distant kisses in your hair. Hold fast to the light within your heart, even though the thing wraps cold fingers within your very body, your very being, leaving behind within the ashen winters. Remember the strength that you have, your connection to all through your core, let the beyond blaze through your mind, and you'll not want anything more. Hold on for one more grueling day, clinging fast to your light, pouring it forth from within, and love with all your might. And for those not familiar with the thing, the thing is a creature which appears within the Selkie Skins series of books that I've been writing. And the thing was actually born out of entities that are known to attach to people and to help fuel their depression. And I still forget what the originals were called that were in folklore even before Golden. So I am still, as I get time, looking through my collections of folklore, trying to find those lovers because I really wish I could remember what they were called. This next poem is actually a series of three poems. The first part is from the perspective of Kirsty from Selkie Skins. The second part is from Blowing Wind, her counterpart within the Dragon Shaman books. And then the third is from Willow, who's also known as Angelina, from within the still unpublished The Shadow Chronicles. Those three series go together and will eventually be followed by a fourth where all three of the heroines meet up and attempt to take down Astareth after his return to the mutual realms of which uh, they are part. So, once again, what am I? What am I? Kirsty. Who or what am I? Caught here between land and sea, caught upon the cold gray rocks, lost within the rolling mist. Not of earth nor of water, not human nor swimming seal, mixed birth, dirty blood, and neither type wanting me, all brought forth within a line. What sort of thing am I? No matter which path I go, I am told I am not that. I can't just lay down and die. It's not allowed. I am called. So I walk, one foot at a time, at the join of sea and shore, wishing hoping that I'll find, at the last, something more. This pain, this burden, blackens slowly my very core. What 
then am I? Blowingly. I am not white. I am not native, or so they say. I look white. I am not. Not in my heart. My blood is red, as is yours. As is his. My heart is red. The earth and sky meet in me. I bleed with you. Grandmother, grandfather, why do they do this to me? I only want what should have been, or to heal this draining wound. What am I, if not what I knew? Some accept me, some don't. But what am I now, when the drum beats, where the stream meets the sky? Should I try to fly? Willow. Who am I? What am I? Here before the flame, dancing on the earth in the circled stones. The wind blows a cold call deep within my bones. Where am I, if not from here? What am I deep inside? This unfurling thing. The words of the tree are faint. The arms of the mountain strong. But why does the wolf howl and the wind pull us along? What am I sliding between the worlds? What purpose do I have within a greater whole? Even worse, do I even matter? Should I even exist? Your sweet words that you care don't change the pain of stairs. Each of those heroines has their own issues that they are working through in order to regain lost pieces of themselves and become whole. And this third and last poem that was written for the month of March is titled, I Can Remember a Time. I can remember a time when if people called ill names, people lost respect for the name callers, people washed out mouths, when if you can't say nothing nice, then say nothing at all, meant that. Adults and children alike. I can remember a time adults acted like adults. Children were able to be children. Worrying about living was not a child's way of life. Free to be and play. And adults were role models. I can remember a time when ugly was not on all the faces. When people were trying to be people, not monsters from the closets of hate and fear. Were the bad names whispered in Stoppard ears. I can remember a time when three little monkeys taught wisdom with their signs. See no evil, speak no evil, say no evil. But now it is encouraged by those who taught better, and little thought is given. I can remember a time when words were weighed processed, checked, and pondered before they slipped out of mouths to ensure that what was said was proper and just, built and not destroyed. Where did that go? Why do the role models not practice what they teach? Why must they gloat and goad and say things that might be a threat even if not meant that way. Sometimes I get very fed up with this world. The monsters and the bestiary sometimes pale before the faces of those you thought you knew, and the dark things glimpsed growing behind masks, where once nothing hid. I leave you with this thought today. Are you perhaps harboring a monster within? And if so, what are you going to do with that monster? Until next time.